I'll uh, make a, few sh a short statement and then I'll take some questions on, on this subject on which I am talking this morning. <clears throat> in the last few weeks and especially in the last few days, the greatest subject of our national debate has been the ongoing conflict in Israel and in Palestine. There has been passionate debate on both sides of this issue. <clears throat> now I want to begin by sharing a very personal experience. On the 18th of April 1996, the Fijian Battalion headquarters with UNIFIL in Ghana, South Lebanon, which <clears throat> at the time was under my care, in terms of its security, accepted hundreds of refugees. That day, the position was shelled, resulting in the loss of hundreds of lives, <coughs> especially women and children. <coughs> I can still vividly remember the blood, the carnage, and the mothers weeping for their children, and the children finding out that they no longer have parents. In any war, no matter how justified your cause may be, it is always the innocent who suffer and pay the price. Those images, those memories are seared in my memory forever, reminding me every day of the fragility of life and the devastating consequences of conflict and of war. This is why the National Federation Party has taken the position of supporting a ceasefire in Gaza, contrary to Fiji's position at the United Nations. Now, I share the same position. And let me say that I condemn in the strongest of terms the acts of aggression by Hamas that initiated the situation that is currently happening in Israel and Palestine today, and reiterate the position of my party in supporting an immediate ceasefire in the region. Hamas is a terrorist group. It is not an internationally recognized representative of the Palestinian people, most of whom just want to live their lives in peace and have prosperity. Now, turning to the subject of uh, my press conference today, which is the application to march in solidarity with the Palestinian people. First, let me say to our people that your voices, your concern, and your passion are all valid and are acknowledged. It is essential for us to recognize the pain and suffering of all individuals involved in any conflict, including the ongoing strife in Israel and in Palestine. Independently, the police have made their assessment, looking at risks, considering the potential for communal discord, and have decided to deny the, the application. This decision was made by the police However, as Minister for Home Affairs, it is my duty to explain to the people the rationale of this decision. <clears throat> Granting this much means we would also be setting a precedent. If we allow this procession, we must, in fairness, grant permission to pro-Israeli group who may wish to express their perspectives and their grievances too. <clears throat> now this could lead to multiple matches, each with its own set of challenges, potentially escalating tensions within our community. My primary concern remains the safety, the safety and the well-being of all of our people and our Fijian community. While I understand and respect your rights to voice your concerns and stand in solidarity 
but it is important that we remain united as a nation while also acknowledging the suffering faced by those in Israel and in Palestine. And as I relive my haunting and traumatic experiences in the Lebanon, where the scars of conflict were so brutal, visible, I'm reminded of our collective responsibility to ensure the safety of all Fijians. I implore you to understand that our decision isn't a stand against your cause, but a plea for safety, unity, and understanding and most importantly, peace. <clears throat> now we can find alternative means to voice our concerns, means that don't risk the peace and security of our community. And let's come together, not as opposing factions, but as a united front, to find constructive ways to contribute to peace and understanding both here in Fiji and abroad. I thank you for your understanding, and I pray that we find the strength to navigate these challenges, these challenging times, with compassion, empathy, and unity. May God bless you all, and God bless Fiji. I'll take a few questions. Thank you, Minister. I'm Christiana from FBC News. I have a question on uh, impartiality from the Fijian government's perspective in relation to this war, given that this is a key principle of the UN peacekeeping, and given that Fiji is a critical, um, I guess, a critical symbol of peacekeeping in the UN. So do you, uh, is the government worried that uh, the stance that they have taken today to support Israel's right to defend itself against Hamas uh, will affect um, um, the imp impartiality of our peacekeeping duties in the Middle East? Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> government has already made that announcement to support Israel on the first day when it happened. Yeah. We are always concerned, firstly, about the protection of our peacekeeping troops in wherever they are in the Middle East. That is our primary concern, and I've always said that. That is never compromised. Government's position is a political one. And as you, I have already mentioned, and as we all know yesterday, it's a political decision that is not said by my party. However, that is a separate issue to the matter of force protection for our troops. This is why this government has made, you know, the decisions to purchase as much force protection measures, including armored vehicles and all that, to protect our soldiers, because they are exposed to all of these areas. They're not the least of our concerns, but if it does become a concern, then I will be advised by the commander who I, in turn, will then advise the government in terms of the safety of all of our people who are abroad, particularly our peacekeepers. And government will make the decision when it see fits, if we need to recall them or not. But let me assure everybody right now, our troops are safe. And there is no need to worry. There is no need to worry. They know what they are doing. The UN is... Um, the, the UN has processes to look after the, the, the safety of all of, you know, UN troops on, on peacekeeping. And government is aware. So we're not worried. We're not worried uh, about their safety. Because we assured, you know, at this stage that everything is there, you know, for them who are protected right now. But if that does change, we will make sure that we look after their interests first. So just a follow-up to that question, <coughs> excuse me, you mentioned that it's a political um, decision that was taken by the government, and this, the Canadian amendment and the UN resolution both asking for the same thing, yet the only difference is that the UN resolution doesn't go as far as to naming Hamas. So uh, my question is, you mentioned that NFP doesn't support that, so how is the coalition going to... Um, I guess, approach this matter as a united front if you're not agreeing with the current stand of the government to vote against the UN resolution? Yeah, the coalition is secure and it is intact. Our position in the coalition is secure. You know, how many married men are in this room? You don't have the first 
day of you know disagreeing with your wife that you apply for a divorce. It's part of nature. You know, this government allows for transparent uh, processes. It listens to the voice of its own members. In places we differ, but we are secure under the leadership of Prime Minister Rambuka. We expressed this yesterday. This is but one area. We have different areas of our principles that we hold. That does not mean that we are not united. We are. I want to assure you and our people, our coalition government is secure. Our coalition government is together. We are here together. We have differences of opinions all the time, like anybody does. But we share it openly. You know, we share it openly with others, we discuss it openly. It is a matter for people to know that your leaders are humans. We have varying opinion about these matters, and we tackle it as we go. But as far as the coalition is concerned, let me assure you and the people of Fiji that your government is united and together. And just a fi final question from me, sir. Um, do, you, do you worry that um, this stance is taken with, a with, with some sense of religious belief as we understand that our Prime Minister supports Israel um, even before he came into government? And do you think that his uh, religious belief is clouding his judgment to stand for both the civilians on both sides of this war? As we understand, this war goes way back 70 years ago. So do you think that religious belief play a part in this? And should you uh, condemn as well the, the death of Palestinian civilians um, because of Israel's right to defend itself? I, I know the prime minister is making some statement later. I would say perhaps as you're questioning his opinion on that, he'll be the best person to answer you whether his religious belief is clouding his judgment as prime minister. We have made our position. Our coalition is intact under his leadership. We're condemning, you know, the acts of the, you know, the victims, you know, the men, women. You've never been to war, you know. Many of you watch movies, you know. I've shared a very little bit of experience. This is something, in any war there are no winners, there are only victims. And it is its stand that we make this informed decision to stand for the rights of those who get caught in this conflict. Irrespective of where you stand, Fijian society is divided over it. The Prime Minister is only one man. You can ask him where he stands on this matter. We've made our stand on where we stand and where I stand. So you, be, you, know, you can ask him that. And that's, um, to be in all fairness to the Prime Minister, you can ask him that. But let me say this again, you know, in war, and most have never been to war, there are no winners, there are only victims. And it's the victims that we plead for. And this is why we stand on this position today. You know, people, leaders of the world, to unite in peace and look after the people, because, you know, you're watching the news. Irrespective of where you stand on this crisis, you know, you feel for the people who are there on both sides. I'm deploring Hamas, it's a terrorist group. You know, but where will forgiveness come through this process? But if we are going to move forward, we first must forgive, you know. He said, you know, it's been going on for thousands of years. Someone had forgiven somewhere along the line, I'm sure things would have been different. Thank you. So, Salah from Fiji One. And just to follow up on uh, Christiana's uh, question, uh, critics are calling the coalition government as a Christian uh, fundamentalist and indigenous supremacist. Can, can I just get your take on this? Okay, which, which people? Okay, whichever those people are, that is not true. And so I was uh, choosing to become one of the 14 countries in the world to oppose the UN resolution, the right decision for Fiji, when countries like Australia had abstained from this. I'll, I'll let the Prime Minister is going to talk about the UN resolution and the implications. I suggest that you talk to him. Uh, my main area is in terms of, uh, you know, particularly the position of NFP, I've quoted that, and also because of the march in implications to the role of, that I play as Minister responsible for security for Fiji. 
So uh, Prestian says that he's the minister responsible. Okay, thank you. Um, so with regards, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just uh, getting caught up a little bit. So you can't speak on Fiji's position? You can only speak on NFP's position and the application for a protest? The Prime Minister is going, I understand I've been informed by his office, is going to be making a statement today with regards to that because it comes under his portfolio. I would rather that he speaks about that. I am speaking on a matter that is my, prime, is my ministerial responsibility, which is the match which is handled by the police. So I'm telling the nation today that the police... I said that earlier before you arrived, that uh, the police have decided that the match is not, uh, will not occur for matters of security and also because of, uh, you know, the animosities that, are, that both sides of the community are carrying. So my responsibility is to keep Fiji safe, and that's our job, so that's where we are. So what about the Islamic community who don't feel like their voice is being heard with the denial of the protest uh, application? This is not an Islamic. I, it was never Islamic. Uh, there has never been anything. This was an application by members of the university students who wanted to match. Uh, that's the one that I saw. So the assumption is that they are standing for the voice of the Palestinians and for the voice of the Muslim community here. So what, what would you say to the Muslim community here who feel like their voice is being denied by their government? Well, what I'm saying is this. This matter is not a matter of Islamism. Let me just say that. It is not about Islam. People might perceive it to be. I am not perceiving it as a matter of Islam. We are not. This is a matter, as far as I'm concerned, the matter about humanitarianism about the conflict which is happening a million miles from here and everybody is watching. And we are only trying to appeal to this situation that people who are actually controlling this conflict just have common sense and take care of the men, women and children. Because the victims, you know, live there on both sides, on both sides. And so that's precisely why members of the public also had hoped that NFP, being the major coalition partner, would have been able to influence the government to vote for the resolution that would bring in humanitarian uh, supplies. Why has the NFP uh, been unable to convince um, PEP to take that position? Yeah, that was a, a position that was taken, and I think it's best left to the PM because it's out of that ministry where this decision was made. Can you tell us about the efforts that the NFP made within the coalition government to make that position more prominent? I am the former president. I had expressed right at the initially the position which we all stand for. It came out later, but I had started at the beginning of this war. Irrespective of where you stand, we stand with humanity. Well, that's precisely why this resolution was made, sir, so humanitarian affairs could go in. Well, exactly, you know, I, what I'm saying is the decision was reached. You're asking about NSP. It's been stated twice where we are. At the beginning, when I said it openly, and then now reaffirming. That decision, if you would like to know the rationale of government, the minister and the prime minister, with all due respect, I think you should ask the prime minister when he stands in front of you. Why has your government made this decision? Do you have a message for your voters, the people who look at NFP to be the middle ground in all conflicts? Well, you know, the issue here is the issue about peace. I'll be losing a lot of voters on this decision, but that does not matter. You know, the issue is to stand for what we believe, you know, is the important thing to bring across to the people, and that is the interest of the people who are the victims in this war. Okay. They are the innocent victims. Nobody, everyone is taking sides on this matter. And that is natural for humanity to do. But we are raising this matter because the victims need to get recognized. Both sides. Hamas started it, the Israelis got killed, Whole, you know, kibbutz got shot at in their sleep. People were taken hostages. Israelis retaliated. 
it's going on forever, you know. But some forgiveness must happen somewhere. I know it's a political matter, and it's not, it's not a linear or simple issue. But I think right now, the least of my concern is whether I get voted back in or not. I'm here to say, you know, the security of the nation is important to me right now, so I have to control government exercise responsibility about the matches that have been applied for, and I've already said that. And I'm only a mere servant. If people don't like what I, the decision that I've done, which I believe is right, and the choice is always theirs. And we stand with these decisions that we make. Last question. Whose safety are you worried about in terms of denying the permit? You say it's a safety and security issue. Whose safety are you worrying about? Everybody. 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 You know, Lydia, you've been, you know, you've been commenting politically for as long as I can remember. You know, all it takes is something simple. And it's embedded in our history. Cases after cases where these things happen, you know. I'd rather do this than try to clean up the fires afterwards. Because, I mean, you know, I see you share on social media. You can see what's burning out there. You know, you don't have to add fire or add fuel to a fire. Let's just hope that our Fijian people are going to be responsible and act with maturity on this matter. So your government is acting maturely. And hopefully we can all come together and stand for the victims of this conflict. Thank you. Maka.